So here we go. And I'm just gonna, as I said, this is web-based. I happen to be on a Mac uh, and I'm logging in. I'm using, um, we can use Firefox or Chrome uh, or uh, pretty much most of them are working these days. Firefox or Chrome are the two that I utilize the most and uh, very popular. And you can go Mac or Windows to access the program. I'm gonna log into the program Everybody uh, will get a login. Uh, whoever sets up the program and is in charge has the capability to set up different levels of security. I have full access to everything on this uh, setup. Uh, you might have clerks who you might only want to do entry. Uh, you might have people who you just want to access reports. So obviously there's different security levels available. What you see here is I have one company, uh, which I assume is a commercial house. Um, I have a lot of clients who do commercials who have multiple corporations. So you'd see all the different corporations listed here. So you can jump between the different corporations and do entry uh, separately if that's how you do it. So I'm going to select my company. And now we're on the main screen of Media Web Commercial Accounting. Uh, and we'll go through uh, the, the menus to give you an idea of how everything works. Um, first, we have user maintenance. And here we have uh, users. Uh, here's one of my IDs. And I'm going to go in to that user. And here is where I set up all the information. Uh, data entry privileges. And you see here... Uh, for someone like myself, I'm going to have access to everything. I'll just hit select all, and that will give me access to all options. But let's say you have somebody who, uh, as I said, a clerk or works in a department, you might only want to let them into AP or POs or um, whatever the options that you want to give them, and you can let them add, and you can prevent them from deleting if you want. Okay, so all different options. And they have other privileges. Uh, you can uh, select or minimize the reports that people have access to. Um, also, you have the capability to set up multiple companies in one database. Two ways that people uh, do setup is if you have multiple corporations, you can set them up in separate databases, or some people uh, will keep them in one database. Uh, that's up to you, and it's just a matter of how you want to set that up. Okay? Um, I will then, uh, and then I'll make my changes and save uh, the IDs. I'm just going to come right out. And then we'll cancel this. So you just go in and set that up. And once you set that up, uh, you just only need to add if you have new people. Then we have user settings. And this will give you an idea how the program is structured. Um, you go through data entry privileges. Now here you can set a lot of defaults or none. For example, like here I have one company, so I don't need to, I can set up default companies. So everything will default to the company. Uh, currency, you could actually set up multiple currencies. Let's say I had a Canadian bank. I could set that up as well with a conversion. And I can add as many banks as I want and I can set up a default. And then you'll see a lot of options here. Some of them are just cosmetic display confirmation messages, handle enters, tab. So these are just different options that you might modify. Uh, over here are colors of different fields, uh, and you can customize that as well. Then as we move along the tabs, we have uh, the AP invoice tab. And what you select here is print order on check stub by invoice number or by transaction number. Then we move to the journal entry module and here we can select source codes say in the journal entry we give uh, the option there's a field and i'll show you when we get there um, different source code options so i can subcategorize journal entries such as cc for credit card je for journal entry or wt for wire transfer okay all right have a question that came up um what does the AP and AP invoice stand for? That's accounts payable. 
that's what that stands for. Okay, those of you who don't know, AP is accounts payable, and you'll also see AR coming up, which is accounts receivable. Okay. Um, then we go to the next one, which is petty cash. And here we uh, will key in a default custodian. Custodian really is a petty cash bank. Um, so it could be somebody who keeps their money in a box in their desk, or it could also be a bank account specifically designed for, um, uh, for your petty cash, where you're taking all your money out. So we've seen it all different ways. As I mentioned, AR invoice, which is accounts receivable. This You'll be entering AR invoices here. Now, just to reiterate, the difference with this being the commercial system compared to some of the um, production accounting systems, you have the, all the modules that you would need for a gener from a generic accounting system, such as accounts receivable and cash receipts, as well as the full production accounting, full double entry accounting. And in this module, you have the option to set a compute sales tax when saving invoice for the states that have uh, sales tax on that. Um, then on other, uh, you can set up your reports. Default, I'm using Acrobat in this setup. And then uh, you show negative amounts in brackets and financial reports, just a formatting option. And shade alternate lines on reports, okay? Uh, then we go to the last tab on this and that is jobs. You will see the first option is default job type, AICP or AICE, okay? So I said commercials earlier. So for those of you who don't know, AICP is Association of Independent Commercial Producers. It's just a standard format for the chart of accounts, um, though you can customize that. AICE is um, Association of Independent uh, I think these is creative editors. And um, so that's for post. Um, so it's just a different format used in the job area uh, for either production or post. And then you can default your chart of account. So if you um, customize the AICP, uh, you can modify that as well as some people even modify it per job. So you have the capability to customize that as well. You could default the chart of accounts to a specific job if you'd like. Down here, income selection uh, for job reports. Uh, just a question, include all income accounts. Uh, include only income accounts from account information tab of job maintenance, uh, one or the other, okay? So those give you uh, an idea of uh, the modules that need to be set up. You'll also see that up here we have the company sh uh, name and the current period we're in. Uh, obviously, I'm not up to date on this demo. I really got to bring this up to date, but it's showing it's 2005, 1203. So it depends on how you set up the um, the periods. Most people in commercials will actually have it set up uh, on a monthly basis, but. You could actually do it weekly if you wanted to, like they do in features and TV. All right, so that's a setup. As I said, once you have that setup, you won't really have to do that much uh, in that area again. And to flow through here, uh, we have bank setups. As I mentioned, you have as many banks as you need. Uh, relatively unlimited. I've never seen anybody run out. So I have Media Services Demo Bank. Uh, generic information, and the default accounts down here, cash account AP, obviously that will come out of your chart of accounts. Um, then we have your check setup, and this is where you can define uh, what check stock you can use. A lot of people will get their check stock from Deluxe, which is um, used in Canada and the U.S. Uh, we also you see the Media Canada format. Um, and there are some other formats, forms consultants, another format. And uh, a lot of people actually come off QuickBooks to this and have a lot of stock. Usually we can match up to uh, the QuickBooks um, check stock. Um, another question came up, is the bank setup linked to your online banking? Uh, the bank setup at this point 
from uh, it's not downloading your bank rec if that's what you mean at this point um down the road we do hope to add that because we do have that in our feature system um so hopefully that's something we'll be adding soon uh what we do have links to is positive pay and uh what that is some a lot of studios use that is when you generate uh, a check run it sends the uh, check information to the bank so they can uh know what clears okay all right so that's bank setup and then we have chart of accounts uh chart of accounts generic chart of accounts um this is for commercials so you have a standard balance sheet uh income statement and g a for general expenses your production cost the way the chart of accounts is set up here um, all job costs flows through cost of goods sold, and then you break everything down in there using either the AICP line numbers or whatever line numbers you want to customize with. Okay. And if I click into any, uh, let's say general expenses, here are some of my expenses. This happens to be four digit chart of accounts, but I've had people with three dash two, uh, four dash two, uh, whatever is appropriate for you. Okay. Um, so that's chart of accounts. Uh, then we have companies. As we talked earlier, you can set up a, your multiple companies in one database if you want to. Uh, then we also have currency. And here you would set up a currency conversion, current rate, budget rate. I don't have, I only have U.S. dollars. But if I wanted to, I could just go new and I could add, um, a Canadian currency or UK it doesn't really matter. Uh, that all can be set up right here, whatever you use. And obviously, just you put in the right uh, conversion rate for that period. Okay. Then we have department, and that a breakdown of the department, which is a nice option for the larger companies. Um, some companies have uh, different departments, so it's really just another sub-level of the chart of accounts. Okay. And a question came up. On chart of accounts, any flexibility in account for it? Yeah, with full flexibility. Uh, mine just happens to be 2-2, but uh, as I had mentioned, you can actually do 4-2, 3-2. Uh, Again, uh, most of the we haven't run into one that we can't deal with. Uh, if you have some unique needs, uh, we can double check it. Um, but uh, no, yes, it is flexible. We set that up at the beginning for each client and set up the structure of their chart of accounts. Okay. All right. Next setup is free fields. Free fields is very handy. Um, you'll notice I have New York tax incentive codes. Um, and uh, up, upstate, out of state, non qualified, qual whatever you need to set up, all you need to go ahead is uh, set up a new code. I'm going to put in just uh, D, actually, let's put G for Georgia, that's a common one, and just set up the code. So you can use it to track different uh, transactions for eligibility of the tax incentive. That's one thing that makes it real popular that it's used for. And then you can use it for anything for that matter, but tax incentive just happens to be something that um, it's used for heavily right now. Uh, but if like somebody uh, wants to track all costs related to the producer, you could do that. Anything like that works. Okay. Um, then insurance is, all, is similar to a free field. Uh, if you have a fire or you have to do a reshoot because whatever reason, you track all costs for the reshoot so you can submit it to the uh, insurance company. We also have a, a field for locations. Um, actually, my setup isn't used, so it's not uh, coming up on this one. Um, and then we mentioned earlier the PC custodian. This is where we'll set, I have uh, the custodian. This is my default petty cash. You can have multiple um, custodians if you want, um, but you set up the client, the bank, 
and let's say it's Bob Jones and you default that and then you default the accounts in here. So when you do petty cash, it knows where to put everything automatically. Okay. Okay. All right, then, uh, so that's the setup area. Now we're ready to move on to activities. Um, initially, the setup will our support people will help you do the setup. And then many things I try to count. Uh, banks, once those are set up, you really don't need uh, to touch those again. All right, so um, now we're ready to move on to the activities where you're going to be spending a uh, majority of your time. Okay. Um, and I'll go through all of these and uh, give you a peek at uh, all the areas that you'll, you might be working in. Um, first is American Express interface. This is where, and this, you don't have to uh, use the interface. Uh, some people love it and others uh, are more comfortable entering it into through journal entries uh, or invoices for that matter. It's up to you. Uh, but you see here I have an American Express with an account number. Um, in many companies, every individual has a sub-account, and that would be downloaded per, by account. And here we have all the information uh, that's downloaded on the demo uh, account that I have. You'll see all the vendors, uh, the amounts, descriptions, and you can put in the uh, accounts and the jobs. Because obviously in commercials, you have a, um, an American Express account. I shouldn't say everybody. Some people will just keep um, cards specifically for one job or multiple jobs. But um, if you have one American Express bill uh, for this person, uh, you might have transactions between jobs as well as overhead. So you can go ahead um, and allocate between all the different jobs and all the different line numbers. Uh, and if it's due going to a line number, it would default to the cost of sales. Um, now you do have the ability for multiple cost of sales accounts, depending on, uh, you might want to track different cost and income accounts based on your directors or based on you do uh, music videos and commercials. All those options are available to you. Um, Nice thing also, the more you use the American Express, the better it becomes for you because the system, like you have these vendors here, they're going to go to uh, specific accounts on a regular basis so the system can memorize that. Okay? And once I save this, I can then post it if I want. Uh, you will see uh, up here, uh, the menus up here, load American Express file. Uh, we would set up default settings for the card name, all that information. And then we have the American Express report. You can print that out. Now, all the reports on this system can be printed out or it can be PDF'd or can go to Excel. So if you want to go ahead and um, like a producer might want to play around with the job report, but you don't want to let them touch the books. Uh, so you can export that to Excel and they can manipulate that if you, you want to allow them to. Okay. Uh, also, it's a posting-based system, um, and everything is saved, and it's, in, in essence, a holding bucket until you post it. Once you post everything, everything will go throughout the system uh, into all the appropriate ledgers, and everything will be in balance. Um, but until I post it, I won't see everything in the ledger um, or the job reports and so forth. The next area where most people spend a big chunk of their time is your AP entry. Uh, in here is where you will go ahead and enter your AP invoices as well as your manual checks if you have any. Okay. Um, and I, you see all my vendors over here. Now I can go ahead and uh, type in. I'm looking for enterprise uh, car rental, not there, or let's go ahead. So since it's not there, let's go to the vendor uh, file and I can enter a new vendor. Now, I'm just going to do it real quick and not enter everything, but this way we can go through this quickly. Uh, let's say enterprise 
bar rental. And then I can put in the address and any information I want to default. Work state, federal ID, social security, uh, 1099, some defaults, uh, default accounts if I want to. Optional vendor address information. So as much information that you want to um, put in. All right, then I would save this. All right, actually it's forcing me to do the address. Um, one, two, three, Main Street. Catches all my errors. Uh, Main Street, and uh, I'm just gonna put my zip here. New York, and let's see, it should let me go through now. And just save. Now I have my vendor, and now the vendor's in here, warning me that W9 is not on file. Good warning. And then I can go ahead and select, it's defaulting to my default bank, which most of my AP will come out of. I could change the period if I want to post to a future period. This is a computer check, which is a default. But let's say I was entering uh, invoices for my um, manual checkbook that I took on production. I can just switch that to manual check. It will give me a date. I can change that. I'm just going to leave it for the demo. And then I can just put in a check number if I want. Any type of comment that I want, just type in. I can put in a job. All right, I have three jobs in here. And obviously, on a bigger company, you'll start seeing a lot of jobs. Um, and you would have your course of sales defaulting on those. I didn't set that up. I would set up my job line number. Here are my free fields. I have uh, two free fields set up. Um, so you see, and you see pick lists from everything. Eventually, usually you memorize everything anyway, but you don't need to because everything's there on the pick list. There's my insurance field we talked about, 1099 uh, for uh, 1099. The system can run your 1099s off of here. Um, so you can set the appropriate codes. B1099 would be a secondary vendor. If you gave one vendor money and they gave some of the money to somebody else, it's more on petty cash, but that's what that B1099 is. Then I would go ahead and put the appropriate amount in here, description, and you can then uh, distribute it to multiple jobs, multiple lines, or overhead if you want to. Um, then I would go ahead and save this, and then it would obviously would be wait to be posted. Uh, also gives me a transaction number for every transaction. So I save this and it gives me my warnings. Obviously, I didn't enter everything. Um, just speeding through to try to get through everything. And um, But it, what it, it does, once you save, it gives you a transaction number. So for your audit trail, you can track everything. Okay. Um, so now I would save this if I wanted to and keep entering until I decide to post. Um, also be aware there's a help throughout contact sensitive help. So the system knows where I'm at. It will give you topics relative to what you're doing. I have different reports, AP aging, check register and unposted AP audit. And that's relevant to this area as well. I can set up uh, AP templates, uh, which allows me, let's say I have a regular monthly payment for a lease. I can set that up and that will save me obviously a lot of time. Uh, we'll get to it, but you print checks and I can also post to the ledger from here as well. And we'll, I'll show you that screen as well. All right. So that's one of the heavily used areas. Uh, AR invoice. Uh, again, AR is for accounts receivable. Um, and what I'll do here is enter, let's say it was a production company. Ad agency is my client. Um, so I would enter the appropriate client. If it, there's no client, I would go ahead and enter it into the database. And let's say, um, uh, who's around these days? McCann. All right. And you'd put in the address. And oops, once the valid zip code. So I'm going to put in my zip code, uh, New York, and it knows that information. And again, I'll default what I need to or what I want to that will save me time. 
Uh, the information is there. And now I can go ahead and enter the appropriate client job info if I want to. I have the ability to print the client invoice off of here if I want to. Um, so I could put a client job number in if I wanted to show over just to track it. My invoice number. All right, throwing in a number. It can be, can be alpha numeric if you want it to be. And amount, let's say, is $100,000. Oh, I did a million. Why not? All right, description, uh, first half of contract. All right, down here, what I would do, since this is AR, um, I would tell it the job number that's relevant. And then it would go to the income account. All right, and I would, uh, most of the time, I'm going to default that to uh, that for the job uh, that wasn't done in this job and no job number. And then uh, by telling it the job, it automatically is going to debit receivables and will credit income. So it takes care of all the entries automatically for you uh, very easily. Okay. That's AR. All right. Then we have a bank rec. Those of you know uh, QuickBooks, uh, bank rec is similar to a QuickBooks bank rec. Pretty easy to work with. Um, uh, let's see how much data. I have a small amount of data in here. Basically, just like QuickBooks, you'll go through, you see all the transactions that hit the bank. You'll set up the beginning balance, ending balance, and then you will go through and clear everything against the bank rec. Uh, bank statement, I should say. Um, and... Quick question here. Is the accounting date the period? No, because um, the date is the date of the transaction. Um, we actually have, as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, you can see it up here. My current period is 2005. Obviously, it would be 2016, uh, 06, if I was up to date. Uh, so you have a period and you have a transaction date. So you, which obviously gives you more flexibility uh, for tracking information. Okay, thank you. Good question. Um, you also have the ability. To do something as nice as you can add your adjustments here, and uh, you can. Uh, let's say I have a, a bank charge, so I can add an adjustment in here and just uh, put it straight in on the fly from the bank rec. All right. So or. Uh, I didn't like that. Okay, maybe that's not. A, for some reason, I don't have that set up here. But basically, I'll be able to post my um, bank rec transactions, either a bank charge or maybe I screwed up a check, and I can post that as well. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to the next one. Cash receipts. This has a cash receipts module. And there's two ways the cash receipts module will work. You have an AR against an AR invoice, so you might receive it against the agency. Um, and then you can, you if there were a whole bunch of invoices, you can apply it against the individual invoice. Um, and everything's pretty much going to be, well, I shouldn't say, it depends on the company. Uh, a lot of the commercial houses, the majority of it's going to be checked, but it could be some cash. Um, usually from the agencies or the clients who get a check or a wire for that matter. You could have some wires and uh, put in all the appropriate information. In, it, you'll have the invoice number, the amount, due, and payment, okay? Because you might have a $100,000 invoice but only get a partial payment, and that the system can track that for you, okay? Um, if I did miscellaneous, uh, that's more like, well, it's anything non-AR. Miscellaneous could be a refund on insurance, refund on deposit, and basically that's a debit to cash and a credit. You tell it to what account. It could be a credit to a job. could be a credit to a overhead account, uh, let's say a refund from insurance or, or whatever. So you have full control over the entry. The system uh, will make the automatic cash entry, and you just tell it uh, 
what you're going to credit or debit for that matter for the offset. Okay. And here again, just like all the modules, you save it and then you post it. Um, let me cancel that. All right, further activities. Um, we have, uh, let's see, cash receipt checks. It's where you'll cut all your checks if you're using the checks uh, from the system. Most of the commercial companies do. Um, you can print checks onto your lasers here um, and as many copies as you want. Uh, here I have just a few open invoices right now. I can uh, tell it to print by date range or some people will go and double check their cash flow. You might uh, click one or two checks and just it shows you the amount that's ready. And then if I just wanted to print that, usually it's gonna be, unfortunately going to be a lot bigger than that usually. And what I can do is also print a pre-check register if I want, and that will allow me to um, see everything. Like obviously on two checks, it's not a big deal. But if you have hundreds, you might want to see a, a pre-check run just to make sure you didn't uh, make any mistakes. Okay. And then I would uh, print this and then post it to the ledger. Okay. Then we have client maintenance. We talked about that. Uh, that's basically the uh, client uh, maintenance screen. Uh, instead of going through the entry of AR, I can go straight uh, into it. At the beginning, I, if I was keying everything, I'd key it from here. As you can see, I could also import and export clients um, from different systems. Uh, it could be a different database of uh, MediaWeb or MediaWin, which is their oldest system, or um, usually, if, you can't quote me yet, but um, if we look at your database, such as if you have a client database from a different accounting system like QuickBooks, usually we can import it. So it saves you time. Okay. Then um, closing periods. Here the system allows for closing of your periods on a monthly basis, which is usually what commercial houses want. And also you have your year-end closing. Closing of the period just really switches the status Reminds you what to that you might have unposted entries, so you'd want to post them. Shows you your current period and next, and also it shows you the list of all the reports that you might want to print. Um, these days, people aren't printing the reports. They a lot of them will just PDF them if they want to save GL reports on a monthly basis. Um, so it, obviously, with PDF, it saves a lot of room. Uh, in the old days. Uh, you'd store all the different reports these days. Nobody uh, has the need to do that. That's up to you. All right. And then we have uh, the year end. Basically what that is closing out your P&L. Let's say you're on a calendar year. You close out December. It will close out your P&L to retained earnings. Um, so you're ready for the next year. Since this is a full corporate accounting system, you obviously need that as compared to some people just track uh, when you do a feature or TV just for the project, you might not need that. All right, then we have job maintenance, which is one of the major things that differentiates this compared to a feature system or a TV system. Um, commercials have a lot of jobs going through and I can set up all the information or as little information I want to track. You can see a lot of the information here, directors, producers, um, all the information that's on the front of the ICP form. This allows you, if you want to track all the jobs by director, um, producer, reps, editors. So it helps you do uh, commission reports. It makes it very easy. And we have summary definition. That really just defines the AICP front page. You really don't need to worry. We take care of that for you. You have different needs, we can help modify that. Counting information, track the location on the jobs. So this way you can run all the, um, all the, you have a lot of jobs, let's say in Chicago, there's different, I know there's different tax ramifications per jobs. It will help you run reports on that. Start date, end date, uh, contracts, director's fees, overages, rep fees. So you can track all of that here. Um, bid type, Firm bid, cost plus, um, cost of goods, 
as I mentioned, you default the cost of goods account and your income account for, for jobs. So this way they can automatically, when you enter an invoice or a cost, it knows which uh, cost of sales account to default to. Um, and then you can close the job when it's done. Um, your income and cost defaults to your P&L. Um, if you're doing a lot of work, some people will defer them to your balance sheet on a monthly and do reversals. Um, you can do all sorts of whatever entries you need uh, on the system. Okay, um, so that's the job setup. And um, over here, this is where we can um, load in. Um, the system maintains your actual from just cut, uh, uh, cutting checks and entering all your expenses. The budget can be imported. Um, we can load the, the bid from um, Showbiz Budgeting. Uh, we can also load the bid. Um, we do have an interface with point zero, though we, it's not really sold anymore, but I know it's still out in the market. Um, so you can import uh, the budget information. You also can import the producer's actual. So when the producer's done, you can import the producer's actual to compare how close they are. If they're good, they're going to be coming close to the actual. Uh, obviously, if they're way off all the time, you have to make a decision. Um, also, in here, you'll see all the names of the line numbers, and you can go ahead and modify those if you'd like. Okay. And last but not least is the comments tab. Same as uh, comments tab on the SCP form. Okay. All right, um, that was job maintenance. Then we have journal entry maintenance. And here, this is where you can enter any type of journal entry, whether it's a reclass entry or it is a, um, or a generic journal entry that your uh, accountant gives you. We also give you, just so you know, on the tools menu, an import for JEs. If your account uh, enters journal entries onto Excel, you can import that in. Um, you also might import other things in here. An example, I have a client who uses um, a P card, and we interface with some P cards, but a P card system that we don't interface with at this point. So they just bring it in via the journal entry module, and that actually uh, made it real easy for that client. Um, here we have total debit. So just as a tracking tool, let's say it was $100, journal entry date, I'm going to leave it at that. You can change that, though. Um, why a transfer credit card? That's the source codes. So you can change the source codes if you want to. Description, I'm going to put in demo. Last JE number, JE3, whatever your codes are, it will come up with. Then you can go ahead and put in um, the debit and credit. So let's say 100 and I'm just going to select accounts um, just for the hell of it. And that would be a that'd be a line number. I actually should select the uh, cost of sales account. Um, so let me see if I can find it on here. Um, actually, that's a G&A account. I'm just going to do it as an overhead entry to make it quick, quicker and easier. Um, so let's say $50, $50 positive. And then I can go ahead and uh, change the account to whatever account I want to. Here's my, I'm just going to put, and let's say I want to, I made a mistake. I don't want to take it out of that account. And so I have my debit and credit. This will not allow you to put an out of balance account in. The only transaction forces both sides of the entry. All other entries will take care of themselves and automatically offset. So I can save that. Oh, it found an error. I did not put in a vendor, which is required. And I'm going to use the default journal entry since it's just a simple reclass entry. Okay. And please enter journal entry. Catch me on everything. So there'll be a JE4. All right. And save. And now that takes... And that's... Now that is now sitting there waiting to be posted on the system. 
So while we're talking about it, I'm just going to use the posting option on this menu. And I can now go in and decide what to post. If I wanted to see everything, I can select all. I have a bunch of transactions, AP, cash receipts, JE, and then I can just post everything. Okay? I'm not going to post my these transactions, but it, it takes basically a second or two um, really fast. And then once I post it, put it throughout. You can post after every batch or at the end of the day. Really up to you. It doesn't matter. Uh, but just remember, items will not be seen until then. Okay? All right, um, then we have Petty Cash. This is where Petty Cash is loaded. Um, now, I, you might have some old timers who just want to use a journal entry module. They can do that. But let's say I was um, the accounting department. Uh, let's say Bob Jones is getting the money. Actually, he did to the same person. Let's say John Smith. And the custodian is Bob Jones. Envelope number 678, whatever. Envelope date. Let's say uh, I'm advancing $1,000 and he had an envelope ready and accounted for $500. All right. Description. Second. I mean, let's just call it PC, whatever I want. Uh, posting period. Current or next. Notes, whatever notes I want. I'm going to tab. You'll notice it generates the entries for me. Uh, the first three are taken care of. So I gave $1,000 to um, John Smith. It's debiting John Smith's envelope 1000 It's automatically crediting 1000 to the PC Advance. And then it is going ahead and uh, for the next part of the entry, it's crediting uh, the... Uh, custodian the 500 to clear it out and the last line is what I'm going to distribute to my expenses so basically what I would do is um, distribute this by job to the appropriate expenses okay um, so what I have here um, let's see I'm just gonna pick an account for the time being and then I would go ahead and expense it out all right so one, here's all my line numbers. So obviously, eventually I'd have these all memorized, but I don't. So I'm just going to look and select the line. And then I can appropriately expense them out. And if I need to flag any of the free fields, insurance, 1099. And here I would uh, leave it as 500. Or I could distribute that because it's going to be a million receipts. So I can just uh, break that. Let's say that was $40 tab. It, sees, it brings the balance down automatically and takes care of that. All right. So I'll go through and make sure it balances and save this and post it. All right. So that is petty cash. All right. Um, then we have purchase orders. Uh, you can enter purchase orders in here. I will be honest and say the majority of commercial companies don't put in the uh, POs because they're not, the jobs aren't long enough. Um, that's up to you. It works perfectly. It works great. Uh, you see it more in long form, um, but that's up to you. Um, and uh, it just gets posted and then you can relieve the, uh, the POs with the uh, invoice when they come in. A couple of questions here. Is, it, is there an auto post option? Uh, there is no auto post option. The reason is people usually want to make sure that they audited what they're about to post. Um, so as I said, it just takes a second to post. Uh, really never get that request because people like the uh, safety of it. I could see too many people, things posting before they need it. And that's probably, it's always worked that way. And it's always... We do it based on requests, and we really never get that request. All right. Next question came up. Did you mention you can upload the actual? If so, would all those details happen automatically in PC? The actual is not uploaded um, because, at, well, at, let me say, at this point, the actual isn't uploaded. 
Um, a lot of people do entry. Now, we are getting requests, and it is on the list. Um, I don't know if everybody knows our showbiz budgeting and actualization software. One of the things that we get the request for that we're pushing for is if using that and you logged in, let's say your check log or petty cash, is to be able to upload it from there so you, you don't have to rekey it. And it then would go into batch. That is not there at this point. The only thing that uploads um, the budget and the producer's actual. Uh, so if that's what you're talking about, you can upload the producer's actual so you can see that. Um, the, the transactions for the actual at this point aren't uploaded. Those are keyed. Um, eventually, we'll have an interface to showbiz budgeting and actualization. And those of you who don't know, showbiz budgeting and actualization is our budgeting and actualization software that can be used in features, commercials, any side of the industry, and is available to our clients at no charge as well uh, as the accounting. Okay, so if anybody has questions on that, we'll do webinars on that as well. Um, okay, another question. Same with POs if using uh, showbiz budgeting. Uh, as of this point, the POs are not uploaded. That is something that is on is in the midst of being done because that is one of the big items uh, that people are begging for is to be able to upload the POs. And we have two ways of designing that. Is one is we can upload it directly from Showbiz. Um, and the other is from our e-production office, which is our web-based PO system for approvals. So anybody needs to hear about that, you're welcome. Uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about that as well. All right. Uh, hopefully I answered your questions fully. Um, keep them coming. And let me continue. All right, so we'll cancel. All right, so, okay. And all right, so we mentioned purchase orders and um, last item is vendor maintenance, which we looked at as well, but it's just another way to get into the vendor maintenance. Um, at the beginning, you might come in here and just enter all your vendors through here. So you can go through here or the AP entry. All right, uh, next is the payroll. Uh, as most of you probably know, we're the payroll service. Um, and people using our payroll service will be able to upload their payroll. So basically, they'll be able to come in and load payroll, select a payroll file, and they point to the payroll file. I actually have one that's already loaded. And we come in here. And I have one invoice. You might get multiple. That's a, the way that works is when we process the payroll, um, you can import. Once we process it, just like we generate an invoice, we generate a file for you. So it automatically actualizes out the um, payroll for you. So as you see here, this is a small one. I have uh, wage lines and I have pension and welfare lines and an offset. Um, so that, and then you can post that and they'll expense everything out, uh, all the charges for P&W as well as wages. Usually <coughs> the files are much larger than this. Um, and that allows you to uh, get it in much more efficiently. And also these days we now have our web-based uh, showbiz time cards uh, online and that allows you to do payroll entry online so it flows all the way through electronically from the web-based system through to the payroll service and then electronically back to the accounting system so definitely making things uh, a lot more efficient and if anybody wants to hear about that system as well let me know um, all right, so then we, um, I have a question here. If staff payroll is paid through a service like ADP, can I still import it? No, we, we don't have an interface with ADP. Um, if, uh, so that, that would need to be entered manually. Or if uh, you're working with us on the crew, we can also do your staff if, if it's appropriate. Um, Okay, so let me come out of this. All 
All right. Um, so that's the payroll. And you post payroll, of course. Um, here's your posting module. As I mentioned earlier, you would uh, go ahead and post everything through here. This is the same as we looked at. Each module has access to this, or you can just come to the, straight to the module. Uh, there's also a period transfer. Uh, as I mentioned, you can post to the current period or the next period. That will allow you to go ahead and uh, if you made a mistake, let's say I posted the current and wanted to next, I can go ahead and adjust that. We found that some people posted to the wrong periods, so we gave it an option to adjust that. Okay. Then we have the reports area. Ton of reports. I'm not going to bore you with every single one, uh, but as I said, there's a lot of reports from generic accounting to job reporting. Um, I'll go to the job course because everybody's going to need to use that. And here you'll see you have a lot of different options to be able to run job option for commercials. This is great. You can run by director, producer, uh, rep, state, any of these. So you can really analyze your reports any way you want. Sort by job, sort by line number, uh, job course by line, job course uh, I should say, I'm sorry, job course by job by line or job course by line by job. Also, AICP forms you can print, AICP summary, um, and then AICE and AICP uh, forms. So you have a lot of options out here with a lot of different, so, and you're not going to use all of them, but as I mentioned also earlier, you can export this um, to PDF. So if you need to send a report to somebody, use PDF and then email it to them. Or if you want to give, let's say your producer needs to review and adjust some reporting, uh, it's really easy to send it to Excel. Uh, or you could do it to Word also, but most people do it with Excel. It's easy that way. Uh, we see that a lot on the course report side. But you could do it on um, also on financials and trial balance on any of those. It's real handy. And this way you can send information to your account in that way. Um, makes it easier on them. Or if you send them an Excel file, I've had um, some accountants uh, import some of the information to their write-up packages. Okay. Um, and so this is just one of the re uh, reports. And you, you print it out or preview it. Um, and anybody wants to see samples, feel free to... You'll be able to contact me. I'll be glad to get your samples. Um, then we have a uh, tax cycle, which uh, basically what that is is your 1099. All right. Um, so 10 and also before the end of the year, you might want to make 1099 adjustments, uh, which obviously we all make the uh, types of mistakes where something should have been 1099able or vice versa, not 1099able and you need to adjust it. And you also uh, can generate the report and export to our 1099 uh, module, okay? Um, and that, in a quick one hour, is the uh, basics of our media web commercials. Last menu option is database backup, uh, but I wanna reiterate this is our web-based module, um, so, we do, um, you won't have to worry about it stored on our site and you can access it from anywhere. If for some reason that you have a place where you don't want to be on the web, we actually still do have the Media Win commercials, which is uh, still popular as well. But this is the newest, uh, latest, and greatest, and um, much the most modern system. Okay. Um, so, any other questions before we wrap it up? Um, on the media web commercial. Uh, you are welcome to send me uh, questions offline if you have something specific to your company. Um, also, if, somebody, if you're interested in getting, uh, if this seems like it's something you might be interested in, you can contact me and I, we can arrange to get you access to the uh, demo site so you can play around with it. Um, and also, if you need any information or questions on payroll, uh, I can help you with that, plus the work with Showbiz Budgeting, um, as well 
all these tools work together very well. Uh, again, my name is Steve Bizenov. That's B-I-Z-E-N-O-V uh, at Media Services. And my direct line is 917-305-8309. And my email is steve at media-services.com. And also, those of you in commercials, uh, if you're interested, we also have our free Showbiz Commercial uh, Union Guide, which we give out. You're all welcome to get a copy. Uh, just email me. I'll be glad to send you a copy. That's real helpful on the commercial side. And on feature and TV side, we have... Uh, the Showbiz Labor Guide on our website, and that's accessible for feature and TV union rates. Thank you for coming, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you if, if you have any more questions.